If you take people, and I've told you this, and you expose them voluntarily to things that they are avoiding and are afraid of, you know, that they know they need to overcome in order to meet their goals, their self-defined goals. If you can teach people to stand up in the face of the things they're afraid of, they get stronger. And you don't know what the upper limits to that are, because you might ask yourself, like, if for 10 years, if you didn't avoid doing what you knew you needed to do, by, the def by your own definitions, right, within the value structure that you've created to the degree that you've done that, what would you be like? When I know I need to change something, uh, what I do is I change it. That's what I do, I change it. And I've had people that listen to the podcast and they've reached out to me over the past few years and one of the main messages that they took and put into action was actually putting things into action whatever that was they they stopped eating sugar they stopped sleeping in they they started waking up early they they quit playing video games for 10 or 12 or 14 hours a day they sold that xbox thing there was a guy that bit his nails for his whole life and he's in his like 30s hey what well, whatever no big deals right you know he bit his nails oh well, you know what his nails are all chewed up and they're bloody and they're gross looking and he's self-conscious when he's meeting people and shaking hands and he can't keep his hands away from his mouth while he's in meetings or in, in interacting with people but he couldn't stop and then he stopped he just stopped and the list goes on there's people that have quit drinking and quit doing drugs and quit losing their temper and I've heard from so many different people that have implemented change in their lives so so many letters and messages and notes and I, I want you to know that these people aren't a bunch of of elite special operations warriors that's not who who they are they aren't a bunch of high-level athletes or highly screened and highly trained individuals these are just just normal people really but they're normal people that knew they needed to make a change and they decided they were going to make a change and then they made it. And that is what I do. And that is what you can do too. If you have something to change, if you want to change something, change it. change it now well you know there are remarkable people who come into the world from time to time there are people who do find out over decades long periods what they could be like if they were who they were if they said if they spoke their being forward and they get stronger and stronger and stronger and we don't know the limits to that we do not know the limits to that and so you could say, well, in part, perhaps the reason that you're suffering unbearably can be left at your feet because you're not everything you could be and you know it. You've got to realize that how you act now is directly related to your future success, to your yeah. future happiness, to your future financial situation, to everything. See what not to do because you can't control other people. You can't make them what you want them to be you can't make them who you want them to be the only person you can control is you so focus on making yourself who you want to be faster stronger smarter more humble less ego discipline your body people are not who you want them to be kill your idols sure there are things we can learn from people but people aren't going to be what you think they are what they should be people are going to be faulty weak 
egomaniacal, condescending. They're going to be lazy, entitled, short-sighted. They will not be perfect. Far from it. That's fine. Learn from their weaknesses. Of course, learn from their strengths and mimic and copy them in what they do well, but equally as important, learn from their faults. I often ask undergraduates how many hours a day you waste or how many hours a week you waste, and the classic answer is something like four to six hours a day. You know, inefficient studying, uh, watching things on YouTube that not only do you not want to watch, that you don't even care about, that make you feel horrible about watching after you're done, that's probably four hours right there. You know, you think, well, that's 20, 25 hours a week, it's 100 hours a month, that's two and a half full work weeks, it's half a year of work weeks per year. And if your time is worth $20 an hour, which is a radical underestimate, it's probably more like 50, if you think about it in terms of deferred wages, if you're wasting 20 hours a week, you're wasting $50,000 a year. And you are doing that right now. And it's because you're young, wasting $50,000 a year is a way bigger catastrophe than it would be for me to waste it because I'm not gonna last nearly as long. And so if your life isn't everything it could be, you could ask yourself, well, what would happen if you just stopped wasting the opportunities that are in front of you? You'd be, who knows how much more efficient, 10 times more efficient, 20 times more efficient. That's the Pareto distribution. You have no idea how efficient, efficient people get. It's completely, it's off the charts. Well, and if we all got our act together collectively and stop making things worse, because that's another thing people do all the time, not only do they not do what they should to make things better, they actively attempt to make things worse because they're spiteful or resentful or arrogant or deceitful or, or homicidal or genocidal or all of those things all bundled together in an absolutely pathological package. If people stop really, really trying just to make things worse, we have no idea how much better they would get just because of that. So there's this weird dynamic that's part of the existential system of ideas between human vulnerability, social judgment, both of which are, 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 are major causes of suffering, and the failure of individuals to adopt the responsibility that they know they should adopt. You know, there's this idea that, that people have, that people have a conscience. And you know what the conscience is. It's, it's this feeling or voice you have in your head just before you do something that you know is stupid, telling you that probably you shouldn't do that stupid thing. You don't have to listen to it, strangely enough. But you go ahead and do it anyways, and then, of course, exactly what the conscience told you was going to happen inevitably happens, so that you feel even stupider about it than you would if it happened by accident.